So I know we do a lot of dumplings on my channel, but you're gonna wanna watch this video because I've put together three of my favorites and they're three different styles. So it's kind of like a dumpling guide if you like. First of all, we have prawn dumplings in chili oil. Second, we're going for dumplings in soup. So it's a how to make wonton soup guide. And finally, we have soup in the dumplings. So it's my recipe for fur soup dumplings. I mean, we make a lot of dumplings, but this really simple version, mm, can't be beat, yum. Steaming hot dumplings. This, my friends, is one bowl you need to be eating, like right now. These are my classic prawn dumplings in spicy chili oil sauce. So you guys know by now, dumplings are literally like my favorite food group. Uh, these dumplings are really classic, really beautiful, elegant Chinese flavors with a big, not so elegant, big punchy kind of chili oil bath at the end. And it all works together beautifully. Uh, all right, let's get started on the filling part first of all. Now for me, this dumpling really depends on two things. One is the beautiful pure flavor of the prawns. And the other thing is the kind of crunchy element we're gonna add. And that is with the water chestnuts. So you can find water chestnuts in a can. They're perfectly fine to use canned. I'm lucky here in Thailand, I can find them fresh. Now you just wanna fine dice on these. And now we want some really nice, beautiful herbs here. So I'm gonna use some coriander and some spring onion. Now for me, texture and chopping here is really important. So if your spring onion is really quite large, you're gonna to wanna to thin it out through the stem here. Mine's not too bad, but I know you can get some uber big ones that are almost like leeks. Um, make sure you get a really nice fine chop. And now some really simple aromatics here. I just want some ginger. And some garlic. And now come the prawns. Now you don't need a big cleaver here like I have. It is more fun with a cleaver, but um, a regular knife is just fine. Just make sure you're chopping into nice fine pieces. So you could totally do this in a food processor. What I find though is that when you hand chop your prawns, and I know it's a little bit of extra uh, work, but it's really worth it because you get just the right amount of pop and bounce and texture, and you get some nice little chunks of prawn in there as well. But who am I to judge, guys? If you wanna do the food processor way, totally go ahead and do it. Now the key to getting a really fine chop here is to kind of go ahead and do some chopping and then fold the prawn meat over and then go back in the opposite direction. Okay, so this is the kind of texture that you're looking for. And pop that into your bowl. Now to bind all of this together, I'm gonna to add an egg white. And the egg white only here because I don't wanna add any extra flavoring with the yolk. I wanna keep this as cleanly prawny and a little bit herby as possible. I'm sure prawny is a word, maybe. <laughs> now, a good pinch of salt here. And then just a little dash of white pepper white pepper because it has a more milder kind of flavor than a very harsh in your face black pepper. And now just give everything a mix. Now you wanna give this a really good kind of beating almost and you'll notice that everything starts to become a bit stickier as you're going and that means that the egg white is binding everything together and firming up all the proteins in there and we're gonna get a nice bouncy dumpling filling. So with the wrapping, I'm gonna keep it really simple. See, I don't ask too much. A lot of chopping, but simple wrapping. There you go. Uh, okay, so grab yourself a wrapper. I'm using some gyoza wrappers today. 
and you just want some filling in the middle. And now here is one super important tip for when you're using store-bought wrappers. They're often quite dry and they need way more water than you think to get everything to stick together. So get a lot of water on that edge there. And now I like to just do two pleats on one side at the top here, push that together and then use your fingers to kind of seal that edge. So we've got a couple of pleats on one side and then smooth on the other side. And to be honest, this is going to all wrinkle up once we get it into uh, the water anyway. So, you know, you don't have to be too pedantic here. Now I'm just waiting for my water to come up to a boil so I can cook my dumplings. So in the meantime, let's make our dipping sauce. Very simple, I just need some soy sauce. And then for me, what sets apart a really good dumpling dipping sauce is dumpling dipping sauce. Ah, oh, it's a mouthful. Um, what sets it apart from a good and a bad one to me is the addition of vinegar. So if you can get a hold of this Chinese black vinegar, that is going to give you the most beautiful it's almost like a red wine vinegar sort of flavor so if you can't get the black vinegar feel free to add a little bit of red wine vinegar instead and i just want a good about equal amount soy sauce and vinegar for my liking and then for me it's got to be red oil dipping sauce red oil meaning chili oil and so many of you guys have made my Szechuan chili oil I know you all love it uh, if you haven't given it a try check out my video on YouTube on how to make it this is what it looks like it has loads of different uh, spices in there and you can use a store-bought chili oil of course so make sure you're getting a mixture of chili flakes and the chili oil in there and then to kind of round out the flavors, you really want a little dash of sugar here. You won't notice the sweetness, but it will give the dipping sauce a really beautiful, balanced kind of flavor. And then a little smattering of grated garlic for some extra kick at the end. Now my water's ready to go. It's simmering, but you don't want it really rapidly boiling too much um, because you can run the risk of your dumplings breaking apart. Um, so I just want a nice gentle bath for my dumplings here. And you want to cook these for about five or six minutes or until the dumpling wrapper becomes nice and frilly. And you can just see a little bit of that pink prawn kind of popping through uh, the wrapper. All right, now these are looking ready to go, which is good news because that means I get to try them soon. All right, just give them a drain, pop them into a bowl. I like to go kind of elegant, a little bit fancy schmancy with these ones. So I just put a little serving of dumplings in here. Some of that dipping sauce drizzled on top. Kind of want to make sure you're going to get a really good mouthful of that dipping sauce. So be generous. And then just a little smattering of spring onion. And there you go. I mean, bowls of dumplings don't get much better than that. Ah, oh, look at how pretty that is. Let's just make sure that I've done a good job for you guys. Mm. If you have a look at that filling in there, it's just beautifully simple. With the prawn, just flex of those herbs. But the texture that you get, so you get that crunch from the water chestnut and those little hits of flavor from the spring onion, from the coriander and the garlic and ginger. And then you get the vinegar and the chili oil and the soy sauce. And it really is quite the symphony. Beautiful. Mm.
I mean, we make a lot of dumplings. This really simple version, mm, can't be beat. Yum. Silky smooth, uber soft wontons in an umami rich Chinese broth. Very simple dish guys, but this is the ultimate wonton soup. So I got a couple of tips for you guys for getting everything just right. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the broth. Now I'm cheating a little bit here. I'm using a store-bought chicken stock. It's okay, we're gonna jazz it up. I'm gonna start with some ginger. I just want some slices. That goes into some stock that I've got warming here on the stove. And I want some garlic as well. I just want to crush these guys a little bit. They go in. And then for some really subtle background flavor, I'm gonna add a couple of these spring onions. I'm just gonna bruise them a little bit first to release all of their flavor. Okay, that goes in. And then my secret ingredient is dried shrimp. So these little guys are gonna add some saltiness, some savoriness, just a little hint of background flavor. They're optional, you don't have to use them, but you'll notice the difference if you do. And then for a little bit of seasoning at the beginning, I'm just gonna pour in a little bit of soy sauce. Now I want this to come up to a boil and then I'm gonna reduce the heat down a little bit. Just let it simmer away, bubble away, infuse with all of those flavors for about 20 minutes. If you've got half an hour, that's good as well, but at least 20 minutes. Now we need to make our all important wonton filling. So this needs to be super soft and tender to complement the kind of silky texture of our wonton wrapper. So we don't want a filling that's really firm and really hard. So I've got all the little tips and tricks we need to make that happen. First off, we're gonna start off with some pork mince. And I love a pork and prawn combo, so we're gonna do pork and prawn. I've got some prawns here, I just wanna mince these up very fine. little bit of grated ginger. Now I just take this little piece of ginger and I find it's easy to peel ginger with a spoon and I just want to finely grate that ginger. And I also want some white pepper and a little dash of sesame oil is going to make things even more fragrant. And now here come our bits and pieces that are going to turn our wonton filling into something really soft and smooth. We want chicken stock, quite a lot of it, and an egg. And then to help bind everything together and give us the right texture, I'm gonna add a little bit of corn flour and just add in some salt and then give this a really good mix. And you will notice this is a really wet mixture. It should almost look to the eye like it's too wet. Okay, that's looking good. Now this kind of wet dumpling filling is really only useful when you're doing dumplings or wontons for a soup because you wouldn't wanna deep fry these guys because all of that liquid in there would come out in the oil and the dumpling would burst and you'd get oil everywhere and that would not be great for anyone. Uh, so use this kind of wet style filling whenever you're doing a soup kind of dumpling. And now we're at the folding part. So grab yourself a wonton wrapper and just put small amount in the center. The wonton wrappers I tend to buy in Bangkok, they seem to be very small. So it really kind of depends on the size of wonton wrapper that you have as to how much filling you put in here. But you don't want to overfill it. Certainly don't want to underfill it either. But just go by what happens when you go to fold. You'll realize if it's overfilled because all the stuffing will come out. So now fold the corners together and then just press down one side Press down the other side, so we're making a triangle. Now we've got our triangle. And just brush the edges with a little bit of water. And then brush the tip of your triangle with water and fold everything together, two points. 
and there you have your little wonton. Now don't worry too much about your folding skills here guys, with this kind of soupy wonton, uh, it kind of loses its shape a little bit anyway, so don't be too pedantic about it. Now this is gonna make a whole bunch of wontons and if you're not gonna use them all at once, these freeze really well. I like to freeze them on the tray first and then put them into some bags later. Then I've always got wontons and there's an emergency. It's always a wonton emergency. <laughs> Now before we cook our wontons, let's come back and have a look at our soup broth. Now this is smelling amazing. I love that ginger smell, oh, so comforting. Now I just wanna take off any kind of scummy, foamy things that have risen to the surface. And now the final step to make our broth absolutely perfect is the seasoning. So this is totally gonna to depend on how salty the chicken stock was that you used, maybe even the brand of soy sauce that you used. So it's gonna be a little different for everyone. Mm, I love that subtle spring onion flavor. I'm getting the ginger, just a little hint of garlic and I can tell Got a really beautiful umami, savory flavor that's come from the soy sauce and the dried shrimp. Ah, so good. All right, does need a little bit of salt though. I don't want to add more soy sauce because I don't want to color the stock too much, but I do want a little bit of extra oomph there. Mmm, and now we have hit the jackpot. That is making everything sing. Beautiful. Yum. Now I just need to strain out my aromatics. and you won't believe how much flavor has gone into this stock in such a small amount of time. And then pour your broth back into a clean saucepan. Now we can cook our wontons. And my biggest tip for you guys is never cook your wontons in the soup that you're gonna be serving them in. Because the wontons have flour around the outside of them. That flour is gonna come out in your stock, make it cloudy, make it thick. Uh, alter the flavor. These are all things that we don't want. So make sure you've got a pot of boiling water separate to your soup. And just add your beautiful little, cute little wontons into there. Just give them a little stir, make sure they're not sticking to the bottom. And you wanna cook these for about three or four minutes or until they're all floating at the surface and the wonton wrapper is beautifully soft and silky. And of course, the filling is cooked through. Now these are looking really good. Yes, look at those. Okay, just pop them into a serving bowl. And then ladle over that beautiful, hot, savory broth and then just a final scattering of a few spring onions. And that, my friends, is a little bowl of perfection. Very simple, nowhere to hide, so you gotta get it all right. Let's see how we've gone. So silky smooth and that beautiful broth and the filling. You, you can't even tell the difference in texture between the beautiful soft wonton wrapper and that really soft filling, and that's exactly what you want the least amount of resistance. Or you can eat more quicker. <laughs> I hadn't thought about it like that before. <laughs> oh, these are so good guys, can't wait for you to try them. Spoiler alert guys, these are not your average soup dumplings. These are full of the most amazing Vietnamese fur flavored broth. Yes, that's right. We are making my ultimate fur soup dumplings. All right, we're gonna do the fur uh, stock first of all. I'm gonna do a little bit of a cheats version on this fur broth because it's a bit of a journey to make soup dumplings and you know, let's not be a hero. Let's try and take a few little shortcuts where we can. Um, first shortcut is I'm gonna start with some store-bought beef stock. If you've got homemade, by all means, go ahead and use that. 
And now I promise you with all the little bits and pieces we're gonna add, you won't even notice that that's a store-bought stock. So one of those bits and pieces first up is some spring onion and I just wanna slice through the middle here. Now add those into your beef stock. And now I want some ginger here as well. And some garlic. So now we just need some cinnamon, some star anise and some cloves. Bring that to a simmer and then you wanna let that cook away for about 20 minutes or until it's, the whole thing is like reduced by half. All right, so at this point, this is smelling amazing. I'm getting all of those fur kind of, you know, aromas, the, the spring onion, the spices. Um, now what we need to do is season. And I really wanna season this quite heavily because I want the broth part when it explodes, uh, when we're eating those dumplings to be really intense and amazing. So we're gonna go in with some fish sauce. And some soy sauce. Now I know soy sauce, not typically a seasoning you would put in a fur broth, but because we haven't simmered this for, you know, the eight hours that you would need to for an original fur broth, um, we kind of need a bit more help with the punch. So we're gonna add the soy sauce and then a little dash of sugar here to kind of even out those salty flavors. And just stir that through. Now what we want to do here is strain this off into a shallow bowl because this is where we want to start making our little jelly concoction. And then I want to mix some gelatin powder just with a little bit of water here, room temp's fine. Just let that dissolve like one, two minutes. You'll see it just starts to firm up. All right, so when you've got this kind of like lumpy, thick, jelly-like texture with your gelatin here, you wanna get that into your stock. And at this point, the stock will have cooled a little bit, so it'll be the perfect temperature for adding the gelatin. You don't want it super, super hot or boiling. All right, now give that a whisk. Make sure you get all of that gelatin dissolved in there. Okay, so that just needs to go into the fridge about two hours or until you've got a nice firm set jelly. So my soup jelly should almost be done there in the fridge. I'm just gonna do the rest of the filling stuff first. And what I need is some pork mince. Now, don't be afraid of the fat here, guys. A fatty mince will give you a juicier dumpling. Embrace the fat. And I want some spring onion here. And these guys can often come really large and thick. So I want you to be a little bit pedantic about the chopping here. We want to slice through lengthways until we've got nice fine strips, first of all. Okay, so that goes in with our pork. And I want some ginger here as well. And now just a little dash of fish sauce for some seasoning. So at this point, now I wanna get my jelly out of the fridge. Okay, so this is the kind of situation that you should have really kind of firm, jiggly, a little jiggly kind of jelly. And what I wanna do here is cut this into little cubes and scrape that into the bowl. So the point here is that the jelly is firm enough for us to cut through and kind of mix into uh, the dumpling filling. And then when we steam the dumplings, magically uh, that jelly melts into our beautiful soup inside of the soup dumpling. It's all, you know, very satisfying in my opinion. All right, so get that in with the rest of your dumpling filling. Now just give that a really good mix. And you should have quite a wet mixture here, but not so wet that you can't sort of manage it into a dumpling wrapper. So this is the kind of texture that you're looking for. So at this point, we're ready to do the tricky folding stuff. Not that tricky. I'll walk you through it. I promise you, if I can do it, you can do it. But just one thing here. And I reckon this is where anyone who's tried to make soup dumplings at home and it's turned into a disaster, 
it's probably because you didn't make the wrappers yourself. I know, I know, that's why I wanted to take a bit of the shortcut with the broth because making your own wrappers here is gonna make all the difference. Now I have a video step-by-step -step on how to do that on my channel. Just search homemade dumpling wrappers, Marion's Kitchen, and it will magically pop up. Let's have a go with our homemade ones. A lot more pliable, um, a lot easier to do lots of pleats. And we want a little bit of our filling. And then what you want to do here is you start off like with a kind of pinching action like this with your forefinger and your thumb um, and move that around as you're pulling some more of that wrapper into your little, you know, pinching, pinching fingers. So we go around and around, around. Now look, I am not the Din Tai Fung guy, like, you know, theirs look amazing, but you know, I reckon with a little practice at home, you can get them looking pretty damn cute. So keep going and see how we're kind of, we're able, you're able to pull that kind of really pliable dough up and around that, that filling. And we keep twisting around. So once you kind of get to the end of this like pleating stage, you're gonna kind of, it's almost like a, you've kind of made yourself a little chimney shape. Like if you have a look here, you know, you've kind of got your pleats around here and you've kind of got this, you know, little hole in the middle. And then what I like to do here is just grab a hold of that and then just twist and seal. So that way you're sort of protecting your little pleats that you've made and you've got a nice seal at the top. And there you go. So you've got beautiful, lots of beautiful little pleats around here. You've got one very cute sized little dumpling and you wanna pop him onto a little tray just with some baking paper. They do, they're, very, they're quite wet, so you don't want them sticking anywhere. Definitely want some baking paper down there. Let's cook these guys and we're gonna do this without a steamer because not everyone has a steamer. Um, so we wanna put these onto a plate. I've just put some baking paper on here and now I've got a wide deep pan um, just with some water in the bottom, not full. Uh, and then I'm gonna take a little, I made a little like aluminium foil donut. Um, so that goes into the water. Okay, so the plate needs to go on top of the foil. This gets a little tricky, it's, it's hot so be careful and then lid on. Now these need to steam for about 10 minutes and by then we will have perfect little soup dumplings. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, so I mean, look at that steaming amazingness. Uh, you wanna get these out, use some tongs, that plate will be really hot. Now, what I like to do here is a little bit of decoration. Uh, I just want some coriander. Look, Thai basil would be good here as well if you're not up for the coriander. And then a little sprinkling of some red chili here. And then uh, time for the tasting because it's dumplings and I just can't wait to eat them. Look, so the way I like to do a soup dumpling is to pop one onto my spoon. And then I want to have a good look at that soup. So I kind of poke a hole in there. Oh, look at that steaming little soup. Oh, so good. And then it kind of gets a little ugly here. I like to do this slurping. Slurping, it's, you know, it's soup dumpling slurping. It's the way it's got to be. Mm. Wow, that broth. I mean, whew, it's like we simmered it for days, honestly. Mm, so tasty. Oh. And then this is kind of an optional because there's so much flavor in this dumpling, but I do like a little bit of hoisin and some sort of chili sauce on the side. So I dip my dumpling in that. And then in we go. Mm. That is so freaking good. I mean, <laughs> Forget about all the other dumplings. I mean, that flavor with the beautiful spices and the fur soup and, oh, 
And those dumpling wrap is so perfect. I mean, not Din Tai Fung perfect, obviously. I mean, those guys are like magicians, but you know, wow. Like this is something that you make at home and you're like, you know, very excited. <laughs> very, very excited. I could eat so many of these, oh my God.